Hashem Hashem Naseh Natsiyach. We know this week's parsha is Mishpatim. It has a so many practical laws of civil to build a civil society, and of course we're recording this Dvar Torah for the uh, soul of my father Shlomo Chaim Ben David. Hareni Kaparat Mishkavo Ruach Hashem Tenichenu Began Eden. Today I wanted to talk about the very, very mitzvah of supporting and being extremely careful not to agonize and take advantage of the widow and the orphan. We know if you look in the Torah, in chapter 22, passage 22 and 21, it says, do not oppress and bother any widow or orphan, because if you do such a thing, God is going to hear their scream and punish you. And I just read in the Sefer Barchin Afshi from Rab Zilberstein, such a beautiful and heartwarming story from the Khatam Sofer that teaches us that there's two elements. Of course, any civil and decent person that has any common sense in his head, would be careful not to agonize and bother and take advantage of the widow and the orphan because they are so helpless. But there's another factor that we actually should go out of our way and help them. So they say one of the greatest rabbis of the last 200 years there was the Rab Moshe Sofer, the Khatam Sofer. He was the Rashke Behag. He was uh, a towering figure, a leader of the nation of Israel. So one year, in the city of Pressburg, right before Kol Nidre, he had to address thousands of his congregants. Instead, he told his assistant to go call for one of his students. The student came and was uh, a little bit mesmerized what his Rebbe, the Khatam Sofer, would want from him. And the Khatam Sofer said, there's an orphan in town, and her mother's a widow, and the mother is always so worried, sick. What will be with her daughter that is so poor? I want you, I'm a matchmaker, I want you to marry her. The mouth of the student dropped open. He, he, he was shocked. that It was not the most appropriate moment to be talking about a shidduch right before Yom Kippur. Most people are focusing on the, safe, on the books of life and death and their, their personal things to ask God for on this auspicious day. But yet the Khatam Sofer was worried about this orphan girl. And the Khatam Sofer finally shakes his student and he says, why are, you, why are you not answering me? You want to marry her or not? So finally, he comes out of his trance, out of his shock, this student, and he says, Rebbe, the problem is, I'm very poor. I don't have a dime to earn my name. And also the girl's very poor. Khatam Sofer guarantees his student. He says, if you go marry this woman, this girl, even though both of you are desperately poor, I guarantee you, you will have a blissful marriage with a lot of money, a lot of property, and you will be happily married after. So he says that if such a giant of a person, Rab Moshe Sofer, so the, per, the boy accepts. Then he go, goes quickly, asks this, his uh, gabai, his assistant, to call the girl, the widow and the orphan. And he says, I have a beautiful match for your daughter. The mother also is very appreciative, but also she has an objection. She says, we're poor, he's poor, how are they going to live? Again, the Khatam Sofer assures them that do not worry, not to fear. I will bless you and I will guarantee you that if your daughter marries this young man, my student, they're going to have a happy, safe, safety net, financially secure life in the future. And the match was made. The girl and the bride 
and her mother, they answer, Amen. So we see something so amazing about this story that, you know, the greatness of a human being is not always being selfish and thinking about yourself. Look, the Khatam Sofer said, now I could go say Kol Nidre with a clear conscience and know that I'll have a much higher likelihood of being written in the book of life because I cared about the person that nobody cares about, that nobody's worried about. And just to put a very another beautiful story, it would be a disservice if I wouldn't tell you this story. Another great rabbi from 100 years ago was Rav Chaim Oizer Grzynski, also a similar figure. He was the leader. All the troubles of the nation of European jewel, jewelry were on his shoulders. So from the Jewish Federation of America, the joint, the president of the joint came to give him money to give to the poor people, destitute people in Europe. And he saw that Rav Chaim Ozer was such a great public servant. Similar to Moses, he was totally selfless. He wanted to get him a personal gift from the America that he would send over next time. He, he or his assistant would come from America, the States, to Europe. And what does Rav Chaim Ozer say? He says, any gift you want, any specific item you want from the States, tell me, I'll bring it for you next time. He says, the only thing I need from you is I have a cook in the big yeshiva Vilna. She's a widow and she has a terrible problem with her feet. She needs special orthopedic shoes because she stands a lot and is cooking. That's what I want you to get for her. I don't need anything. And this is a truly important idea that not only should we not oppress them, but people that nobody cares about, the greatness, if we want to follow in the ways of our great leaders, is we should care about them, find them the appropriate soulmate, and, you know, make their life easier. And then ultimately we would be emulating the Almighty. And may Hashem help that we should not hear of any cases of widows and orphans and everybody should have a wonderful Shabbat. Thank you for watching.